This is Dave from Not So Ancient Chinese Secrets and DQ Studios. And I'm here today to share with you how we set up our Nikon D750s to be really the best camera that we can for our wedding photography work. Our goal is really threefold. We want to make this the fastest and most responsive camera that we can. We want to make it the most reliable camera that we can. And we also want to make it the most ergonomic camera that we can because we'll be holding this thing for eight to 10 hour days. Even if you don't shoot weddings, hopefully something that we share can help you make this a better camera for your shooting experience. Before we get started customizing the camera, we can take a look at the various buttons, dials, and rockers that help us navigate this stuff. Taking a look at the back, we've got a whole bunch of different buttons on the left side here, as well as dials on the back of the camera and the front of the camera, and this four-way rocker switch. Even without diving into the menu system, we can press and hold a button, and oftentimes they'll work in conjunction with what they call the command dial at your thumb here. And that changes, for instance, when I press and hold the white balance key here, it'll change the white balance. But the sub command dial, which is at the front of the camera here, also makes a change. It will allow you to change it from bluer to more amber uh, askew. So that lets you make it cooler or warmer, which is really nice. The same thing you can do also with the ISO. When you press and hold the ISO button here, you can change the ISO with the back command dial, but also conveniently on the front dial, the sub command dial, we can turn on and off the auto ISO. And we'll keep this off for our use here. Same thing with the quality. You can change the size of the image as well as the quality of the image right from your sub command dial and your command dials here. The last button on the lower left is the I button, and this gives you access to some menu items that are relevant to the shooting scenario. Where it comes in particularly useful is when you're in the live view mode for movies, because there are some items that are buried in this I mode that you can't get to through the regular menu system. If we do that right now while we're in live view for movie mode, one of the things that I had a hard time finding was the um, volume for the headphone volume and it's buried here in the I menu and only accessible here as well. You can't find it in the regular deep menu section. Another item is also the highlight which gives you the zebra stripes and so that will let you know if you know something is overexposed. So check out the I button if you can't find a particular menu item it might be buried under there. And of course, to get to the menus, all we need to do is hit the menu button. And from here, we use our four-way rocker to navigate to the various controls. And often, if you want to dive into a subject, then you just go to the right and go up and down, highlight the item that you want, press OK. And obviously, if you want to choose something, you just highlight it and you press the OK in the center and it selects that one for you. Another really useful button when you're in the menu systems is the question mark button here, right below the menu button. And if you have a question, you're not quite sure what a menu item does, because there's a lot of different menu items, try pressing and holding the question mark. And not all the time will you see something happen, but if you dive in, oftentimes it'll give you a little bit of a write-up trying to explain to you what that option does. Sometimes you'll still need to dive into the manual, but a lot of times it gives you an idea of what it might do and you can experiment from there. Now let's get started customizing this camera. We had mentioned that our goals are to make it fast and responsive, reliable, and ergonomic. And one of the ways that we make it very reliable as far as the metering is concerned is to shoot full time in manual mode. You'll notice that we always shoot in manual mode for our wedding work. The 750 has some great auto modes and we're planning to take advantage of the auto ISO, for example, in the movie mode so I can keep the exposure the same while as I'm filming indoor or outdoor as the light changes. But when we're shooting weddings, we shoot with a lot of off camera flash for our still photography. And so we really wanna make sure that we have full control of the exposure. When we're in full manual mode, the command dial becomes our shutter control, and then the sub command dial at our fingertip here will become our aperture control, and that's the way we like it. Moving from exposure, we're gonna talk about focusing. We wanna make sure we have the most reliable and fast focus possible. And instead of allowing the camera to determine what's the most important object that should be focused upon, we're gonna to wanna to change it from the auto 51 point focus points to a single point of focus that we can determine with the rocker switch and the OK button. The second thing we're gonna to do to make the autofocus faster and more responsive is going to be taking away the autofocusing job from the shutter and moving it to the back focus button. And that's gonna allow us when the focusing motor is on continuous mode to change from a stationary object to a moving object very quickly. I'll be adding a video in the show note links that explains why we choose to use the back button here to focus instead of the shutter and why it's more responsive that way. 
To change the autofocus modes, we'll get out of live view here. When we'll take a look at this button on the front of the left side of the camera, we've got this autofocus toggle. Make sure it's on autofocus, not manual. And then inside of it is this button. And that, when we press it, allows us to change the autofocusing point as well as the autofocusing system. So what we're gonna do now is gonna press and hold that. And at the top of the screen on the LCD, you'll see that it says AFS. And that means autofocus is for a single shot. We're gonna change that with a command dial to be AFC, continuous. And again, we're gonna explain this in the other video about back button focusing, but trust me here for now. Now the other thing we're gonna change is moving the selection of the autofocus point itself from auto. Now I'll use the sub command dial and change that to S, which is a single point that it's gonna focus on. And this will allow us to tell the camera, hey, this is exactly where I want you to focus, no guessing at all. And so perhaps it's not the nearest or furthest thing away, but that's exactly where I wanna focus and it knows. So perfect. We've got those two settings and I'm a happy camper for our autofocusing system. The next thing we need to do is to program our back button here to become the autofocus on button. On the 750, it automatically decouples the shutter from being the autofocus right when you assign another button to become the autofocus on. To set the function of the back button to be autofocus on, we're gonna get out of live view, press the menu button, and go down to the little pencil here that is a custom setting menu. From there, we navigate to F and go all the way to F4. And that says assign AEL AFL button. And that's gonna be this button right here. And go to the right and choose from the different items autofocus on and press OK. Now that's gonna automatically again decouple the shutter for the autofocus. We'll go back to live view and test this. So right now, if I'm out of focus on everything, I press the shutter, nothing happens. But now if I press the AEL AFL button, it focuses. Perfect. Now remember, we've got the autofocusing system on autofocus continuous, but you say, Dave, what if they're not moving? Piece of cake. You just focus until it achieves focus and then let go. And then now that's just as if you had AF single shot mode. But let's say the subject starts moving, you just keep on pressing and holding the button and you can take pictures as well while you're pressing and holding it and tracking a moving object. So you've got the best of both worlds, the autofocus single and continuous modes. We mentioned that another goal of ours is ergonomics as far as getting this camera to be nice and easy to hold and use through a long wedding day. So instead of just having one autofocus on button, I'm gonna program a second button on this camera so I can use my left hand to press the autofocus on and give my right hand a break so it doesn't cramp up during a long wedding day. Thankfully, Nikon lets us customize a lot of different buttons for this. So we've got these two buttons out front here. The FN button is what I'm gonna to wanna to program for autofocus on. We're gonna also program the PV or the preview button to be the kill flash button. So when I press and hold that as I shoot, I can take a picture without any flash, even if I've got a flash on the camera or off the camera. And that lets me take a quick ambient test exposure as well as take a totally different look without my flashes going off. To program those two buttons, we're gonna go back into our menu system here, go back into the F mode, and the FN button, the function button, we're gonna to go to F2. And from here, we're gonna choose again the AF on option and press OK, and then it's done. And then from there, we're gonna to go to the assign preview button, F3. And this one, we're gonna choose the flash off option. So while I'm pressing and holding the preview button, I can take a picture without any flash going off, and that's exactly what I want. A third button that we're gonna customize is going to be the record movie button at the top of the camera. It's right over here, right next to the shutter. So instead of having to change our ISO with our left hand and our right hand together, we're gonna to program the movie record button to become the ISO button. So with one hand, I can change the shutter, the aperture, press and hold the movie record, and then change the ISO as well. To do that, we go into the menu system. Again, we're going to the F controls F9 this time, and that is assign movie record button. And here we choose ISO. So now I press and hold the movie record button, and I can change the ISO with my command dial. And just like with the ISO button on the left side here, I can press and hold and turn the auto on and off with my sub command dial at the front of the camera. So very convenient there as well. Now that we're done customizing the shoot buttons, let's go in and finish off the rest of our controls. Let's go back 
to F1, the OK button. I'm not gonna change this for the shooting mode, which is gonna reset the focus point to the center, which is what I like. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna change it for the playback mode. There's really two reasons why I'll wanna take a look at the image after I shot it. It's gonna be one, to check focus, and two, to check exposure. So in playback mode, what we can do is program the OK button to become a zoom, and I choose to make it one to one, so I can see at a pixel level if I've achieved the focus that I wanted. And how this works, when you play back an image, you can very quickly zoom in by pressing the OK button to 100%, and it chooses the focus point that you chose, and you can check focus really critically. When you're done checking focus, press OK again, and it zooms out to show you the entire image. Really nice and quick. Another menu item that we like to change is F5, and that's the customized command dials. Here, what we're gonna do is go to menus and playback, and by default, they turn this off, but I like to use my command dial and sub command dial when I'm reviewing the images. So I'm gonna turn this on. And what that allows us to do, when we're playing back images, I can scroll through the images with my command dial very quickly. But what's even better is that I can use my sub command dial at front of the camera to skip by 10 images. And there's also another option in the menu system that allows you to change that skipping by 10 instead of 10. You can go by 50 frames if you wanted. So really nice to navigate the images and review images very quickly. Moving on, we're gonna look at F7, and that's the slot empty release lock. Out of the box, for some reason, Nikon thinks it's a good idea to allow you to execute the shutter without a SD card in. During a wedding, I really don't want to be able to execute the shutter and hear a shutter go off thinking I've taken a shot when I have no cards inside the camera and it's not being recorded. So what I like to do is change this setting to lock. And that means if we don't have a card inside the SD card slot, it won't allow us to fire the shutter. And that's exactly what I want because I don't want any false positives thinking that, yeah, I took a picture, but this recorded nowhere. That would be bad. After F7, let's move on to the movie modes. And the only thing I change here is G1 and G3. And both of those options I've changed to autofocus on so that my AEL, AFL button as well as my function button in front of the camera act just like it does with shooting stills where I can achieve focus when I'm shooting a movie. Now we're gonna jump back to the very top of the menu system by going left here and then choosing the playback menu. And in the playback menu, again, there's a couple of things that make it faster for us to confirm the focus as well as the exposure. Now, we did the focus with the OK button. We're gonna change right now the display options so that we can very quickly determine our exposure. Now we're gonna have the RGB histogram as well as the overview chosen by clicking on the right side of it so the checkbox is checked. So press OK and now when you're playing back an image, you can very quickly go up and down to toggle through all those different selected items. This is the overview mode, which gives me the aperture, shutter, ISO, some more information there. And I can go one more time up, and that gives me the RGB histogram, so I can confirm if any channel's blown out or whether it's the correct exposure that I want. The other item that we change in the playback menu is the after delete. Now by default, it just keeps on going forward no matter which direction you happen to be going in before. Well, I would like just to continue as before and that means if you're going backwards through the images that you were reviewing, then it'll continue to go backwards after you delete an image and that's what I want. We're done with the playback menu, now it's time to go to the photo shooting menu. And the one thing that I do, because we have multiple digital cameras in the house, I like to change the file name to something unique to each particular camera. In my case, is D2 for Dave2, and then I've got another camera, D1 for Dave1, and then Quinn uses Q1 and Q2. So right from the get-go, from looking at the file name, I know which camera took the image. Dave, why would you want a unique file name for every camera? Well, the reason being, that way is really easy to track if you have any issues to deal with. For example, let's say there's a speck of dust. All you need to do is look at the file name and you know exactly which camera it came from so you can clean the sensor, piece of cake. Also, if there's any other issues like write card errors and stuff like that, you know exactly where it came from. Moving on, for wedding work, we always shoot uncompressed raw files. Now, if I'm gonna shoot personally for my family and just running around the house and doing sports from the kids, I don't wanna deal with raw files, and so I'll choose the JPEG fine option. And then from there, the image size, I'm pretty happy with medium JPEG sizes. And if you wanna crop in a lot, maybe you wanna choose the large, but really medium's all I need. And after that, the JPEG compression, if I'm shooting a game for personal work and I don't really care to blow it up or it's not for clients, then optimal quality instead of the size priority that they default to. The next option 
is white balance. So for white balance, if we're shooting weddings, we're just gonna leave it to something that isn't gonna change throughout the day. Usually cloudy or shade, depending on what looks better. But then for the rest of the day, I won't even touch it. And that's because we shoot raw. So we can always change the white balance after the fact. Now, if I'm gonna be shooting JPEGs just for personal stuff, the Auto 2 has been actually really nice. And what's the difference between Auto 1 and Auto 2? Auto 2 keeps the warmth of the lighting colors. And remember when we press and hold the white balance key when we're in shoot mode, you can always make it warmer, more amber, or, or cooler, more blue, at the press and holding the white balance and then using the sub command dial at the front of the camera. So that's also very convenient. I love that feature. And that's it for the photo shooting menu. Now we're moving on to the movie shooting menu. And again, I'm just gonna name the same file naming system so each camera has its unique name. You could change it to something else if you wanted. You can also change it so that card slot two records all your movies if you want. For me, I like using the 1920 by 1080 24p mode versus the 60p. So it just saves a little bit on bandwidth as well as the uh, filmic look. And the movie quality defaults to normal, but I like the high quality one, of course. And besides that, we don't really change anything here. Now we're gonna to go to the custom setting menus. Under A, we're gonna to go to A3 first. And this is gonna be really important to change. Now remember, we're using the back button here to autofocus. Well, and it's always in autofocus continuous mode. And that allows us to press and hold when an object is moving and when it locks, or if it stops, we can let go of the button. And so that's just like autofocus single mode. And if it continues to move, we press and gain and we go into continuous mode where it tries to track the moving object under the focus point. What this does, the auto A3, it determines how long it pauses before it thinks the subject went from stopping to moving again. And because we can just literally remove our finger from the button to start or stop the autofocus, on the continuous mode, we don't need to have it think for us too much. And I move mine to short. Uh, you can even take it off if you wanted, but I don't think that my, um, my reaction speed is fast enough for that. So I like to use short right now. And so that way when it locks focus um, and it starts moving again, it starts focusing again right away when I press the button instead of delaying and thinking, okay, has it stopped? So it doesn't use their brain so much. It continues to track focus for me. Another thing that we're gonna change is jumping all the way down to A7, number of focus points. Instead of the 51, because I'm determining the focus point and I wanna quickly jump from side to side, I only choose to use 11 points of the 51. We'll jump down to A9 here, the built-in autofocus illuminator. And that's this really annoying light that's at the front of the camera, and I choose to make this go off. Honestly, the D750 has an amazing low light autofocus, and so you really don't need to have that autofocus light go on. And of course, during weddings, I don't wanna have in a reception area this light going off and just causing a big nuisance. I'm gonna skip down all the way to C2, which is gonna be the standby timers. Now, I don't want my camera to go to sleep so quickly because I have two cameras. I might be shooting with one, and I wanna bring the other camera up to me right away and be able to start shooting right away. So the default is six seconds, I believe. I'm gonna move that to 10 minutes, and that's gonna be fine for me. Sure, it uses a little more battery, but at least I know my camera will be ready when I bring it up to my eye. The next option that we're gonna change isn't for wedding work, but it's for those selfies that I wanna take with the family, and that's gonna be C3, the self-timer. I'm not gonna change the timer itself, 10 seconds is fine, but I'm gonna change the number of shots from just taking one shot to nine shots, the maximum that allows me. And I'm gonna change the interval, the default is half a second to one second. And that's gonna allow us to, like you make a goofy face, make a serious face, take nine shots to make sure everybody has a good expression as well as eyes open. Once we're done with the self timer, we're gonna jump all the way down to D8 easy ISO, and we're gonna turn that on. Now, D8, you're thinking, Dave, I thought you shot only in manual mode. Why'd you wanna do easy ISO? What this does is if you're using any of the auto modes like aperture priority, shutter priority, or program, what this allows you to do is, let's say, for example, I'm in aperture priority mode, and I've got my live view on here for you to see. And if I wanna change my aperture, of course, it's my subcommand dial, but now with that easy ISO, I can use the command dial here, not to change the shutter speed, but the ISO instantly. So that's really nice to be able to do right on the spot. 
The last item we're gonna change is going all the way down to E5, the modeling flash. I'm gonna turn that off. We shoot with 100% off-camera flash, and I don't like wasting battery power on our flashes with the modeling flash, which kind of strobes really quickly to show you where the shadows fall. It's much easier to take a picture and then chimp it to make a, take a look at the back LCD to see if you're getting what you want. So turning this off will save some battery power on your flashes. Now the last couple settings are gonna be dealing with the comment section as well as the copyright info. We'll go down to the setup menu, which is your wrench there on the left. And from here, we're gonna scroll all the way down to first off the image comment. And we turn this on by going to the right and checking that box. And then you can change the image comment to anything you want. For us, I'm using D2 for this camera, D1 for my other camera, Q1, Q2 for Quinn's two cameras as well. So Dave, why do you use this? What does it do? We use Photo Mechanic to download all of our cameras at once. So four cards get ingested into our computer at one time. And what the image comment is, is equivalent to Photo Mechanic's ID variable. And we stick this inside the name of the file so that we can very quickly identify the camera, of course, and so that we can call the images by camera, which makes it a little bit faster for us. For the astute observer, you'll notice that this duplicates kind of the reason why we changed the file name to D2D1. Yes, you're right, it's superfluous. We kind of does the same thing, and we could easily use Full Mechanic to grab the first two digits of the image name as well. But we've done this for many, many years, and we just keep on making this a habit, and we don't mind doing it, so the image comment is always attached to every image. The next item is a little more important, so let's get out of here and go back into the menu system here and that's gonna be the copyright information. And very similarly, we go right with the rocker and to check the box, we hit the right button on the rocker again to check it. And I choose to put our full name for the artist. So my two cameras say David Chung, Quinn's two cameras say Quinn Chung, and then the copyright, we put our website so that people can always find us easily and quickly. And this attaches the copyright information to every single image that you take. Just a note, if you use Safe for Web on Photoshop, then it strips all of this copyright information from the image. So you're gonna to wanna to watermark the image to make sure that people know where it's from. And that's about it. That's all we customize for our cameras. Now, if you had multiple D750s and you want to copy all these settings, just go to that setup menu and go to Save Load Settings, and you can save the settings to your SD card, pop it into your next camera, and you can load those same settings so everything is set up exactly how you want. Just make sure that you change that copyright information as well as the image naming if you want for the file names. And you're golden. Now you know all our deepest, darkest secrets to make the D750 the most responsive, the most reliable, and the most ergonomic camera that we can. We'd love to hear your thoughts, and if you've got any ideas and tips and tricks, we'd love to hear from you. We've also got links to show notes down below that will have other videos and reviews of this beast and more. So thanks for watching, happy shooting, and God bless.